All righty, guys. Good morning to you. We are live. And I do invite you to come join me for a few moments. It is 25 minutes after 10 a.m. On this beautiful, sunny Thursday morning. This is the fifth day of March 2020. want to give you something that I had come across and I want to share it with you. This is not my um, words. This is something that I don't know who wrote this, but I want to share it with you. I thought this was interesting. Um, and it kind of goes right along with some of the thoughts that I've been um, pondering on in the last I don't know, a week or two. Just to let you know that, you know, God's children, <laughs> I think we live under, way, way, way under um, the blessings that God has in store for us. I, I really do. I think there are things that God has intentions of giving us. I think there are things and, you know, blessings that God wants to pour out on us and you know for one reason or another we just seem like we want we choose to live under you know live far away from what you know our potential if you will and this here i found again i don't have any idea who wrote this there's no um name attached to it but the title of this is my never again list my never again list and this person had written this and and give and we have scripture to back these up and i think as christians you and i we should um incorporate these thoughts in our life you know we should we should incorporate you know these very words number one it says never again will i confess i can't i like this because Philippians 4.13 says, For I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. We should never go around saying, Lord, I can't do this. I can't do that. When he calls us to do something. Now listen, I don't want you to under, misunderstand this scripture. And some, A lot of people uses this verse of scripture, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. But that doesn't necessarily mean that God's given us the permission to seek out and do all things. There are some things that God tells us not to do. There are some things that God tells us, hold back. You know, we, we talked about this in times past. Remember when David had, King David had a desire to, to build the temple for the Lord? And the Lord said, oh, no, 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 no. He said, I don't want you to build it, but I want your son Solomon to build it. You know, David had a good desire. He, you know, his intentions were good to build the temple, but that's not what God's plan was. He said, I want your son, you know, Solomon, when he's anointed king, I want him to build the temple. So there's things that we might want to do, but not necessarily mean that God's given us the, the okay to do it. So, you know, but when we say, I can't, now listen, God calls us to do things, and the first thing that we want to say is, oh God, I can't do this. I can't do that. As if God is going to say, oh my bad, I'm sorry, my mistake, um, I thought you could. You know, God, and we, and we just talked about this yesterday, but you know, God will qualify those that he calls. And so when God puts something in your life to tell you to do this, or, you know, sometimes God may allow you to go through troubles and struggles and you say, God, I can't do this. Yes, you can. Because if God leads you to it, he will bring you through it. So listen, as Christians, you know, we should never, you know, just say, oh, I can't do something that God's called me to do. When God's give you that calling, what we should say is, God, I don't want to do it. Because that's that's what we're truly saying. When God says, do this or don't do that, and you say, oh, I can't. What we're truly saying is, I don't want to. Because God will give us the grace to, to um, perform any tasks that he calls us to do. So, number two. 
Never again will I confess lack. For my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. This is Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. So listen, as, as God's people, again, you know, what did David say in, in Psalms 23? The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And if you look up the word want, it meant to lack. He, he shall not do without. You know, as, as God's people, you know, we shouldn't have to go around and, and live a defeated life. And we're talking about spiritual blessings. We're talking about, you know, the abundance of God's mercy and God's grace. We may not always have all the material things that we need. You know, there's times that, you know, I've seen people who are very faithful that, you know, don't have a plethora of, of material things. But God always supplies. And folks, listen, God will supply all of our needs. He may not give us everything we want, but listen, if we're honest about it and start rummaging through our house and our many um, closets and our many storage sheds and stuff, we may see that we have a lot more than what we really even need. So that should be another thing, you know, we should never, you know, say, I, I'm lacking this and I'm lacking that because anything that you have need of, God said to let us come to him in faith, believing and asking in, and, and it shall be given according to his riches and according to his will in our life. Um, number three, never again should we confess fear. And, you know, this is kind of an awkward one because as humans, we do have fear. As humans, you know, even as God's children, you know, there's things that makes us afraid, but we shouldn't have to live in fear. Look in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So Christian, we should not have to, because fear is a liar. And Satan would love to take fear and use fear against us to torment our minds and to steal our joy. You know, there's a difference between, you know, being afraid of something that's actually happening and being afraid of what might happen. Because a lot of times what Satan uses is the fear of things that might happen not even happened yet and we've already you know worried ourselves half to death we've already you know let it rob our joy you know because of something that could happen that most of the time don't even come into fruition so listen don't let fear um rob your joy don't let fear you know steal your peace of mind um don't confess fear but know that god has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Number four, never again should we confess, you know, doubt or lack of faith. You know, look in the last part. I think it's the last line in Romans chapter 12, verse 3. It says, God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Every single one of us as God's people, every single one of us, even before we were saved, we had been dealt a measure of faith and what did scripture say what did jesus say he said you know just the, uh, having a faith as a grain of mustard seed just a tiny little tiniest seed it says if we had faith the size of a grain grain of mustard seed we can look into the mountain and say be ye um, cast or removed into the sea and it would be removed you know in other words what he's saying just a little bit of faith in jesus christ can move mountains in your life and the thing of it is is in every man is given a measure of faith I always look at a measure of faith as being like a muscle. When when the baby is born, every child, you know, healthy child is born with muscles, right? You know, every baby is born with some type of, you know, muscles in their bodies, you know, where they wouldn't be able to move their legs or arms or anything else. You know, so 
you know, every child that was born is born with muscles, but as they grow into adulthood, some people has greater strength, some people has bigger muscles than others, all because of the way they exercise. Some exercise, some goes through the gym, they lift weights, and they go through the pain, and, and you know, there's an old saying that says, no pain, no gain, and folks, that's a true saying, because if you if you want larger muscles, you know, what you have to do when you're lifting weights is it's tearing the muscle fibers, and then as you rest, those muscle fibers grow back. Back and they grow bigger and stronger you know and so what I'm saying is if you want stronger muscles you go into the gym and you work out and you know you go through the pain of, of torn muscle fibers and but then it heals and it's stronger and greater same way if you want faith in God he's given you a measure of faith but it's up to you to grow that faith and how do you grow the faith by going through troubles and struggles and trials in your life. You know, that's how you get, you know, you don't just lay around and eat donuts all day long and think you're going to gain muscle. And the same way, you know, you're not going to sit there and walk around and, and live a faithless life, but yet think that that's going to grow your faith. We grow faith by going through troubles and struggles in our life. So listen, let us not walk around and confess doubt and lack of faith because in every man is given a measure of faith. Romans 12, 3 says. How about number five? Never again should we confess weakness. Not weakness, you know, as far as our self-righteousness. We should go around saying, you know, you know, I'm, I'm this and I'm that. We shouldn't boast, you know, about anything righteousness of us because there's no righteousness in us. But we should, as God's people, we shouldn't walk around and, and cry out, Oh God, I'm weak, I'm weak, because listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and I actually encourage you to read verses 8, 9, and 10, but I'm just going to give you the last part of verse 10. It says, For when I am weak, then I am strong. Paul said, In my weakness is when I called on the Lord. In my weakness, in my sadness, in my trials, in my troubles, in my battles, when I'm face down on the ground is when I look up and I call upon my redemption, which is Jesus Christ. He said, so I glory in sadness. I glory in temptations. I glory in the troubles of life because that draws me closer to God. And folks, listen, he's not saying, oh, yippee, skippy, I've got trouble in my life. But he says, I know when I do have troubles that I can go to God and through Jesus Christ, I can attain victory. I can attain strength. So when I am weak, then I am made strong. Folks, we can be strong in Jesus Christ. And it's the troubles and the sadness of this life that draws us closer to God. We've talked about that sometime before in the past. Folks, listen, if everything has gone good in our life every day, there's no problem. Every day there's no turmoil. There's no trouble. We'll, we may say, thank you, Lord. And then we'll move on. But eventually we'll get so complacent that we won't praise the Lord as often. We won't pray to him. Listen, how often do we get down on our knees and pray and plead with God, you know, for 45 minutes or an hour or longer when everything is going good? We usually just say, oh, thank you, Lord. We're so highly favored and blessed by you. And then we move on. But it's in the struggles and the trials of life that brings us to our knees that draws us closer to him. So God allows situations to come in our life to draw us closer to him. It's not a punishment, but folks, if he doesn't allow these things to come in, we would find ourselves further and further away from him. So listen, if you feel like you're weak, you don't have to be. You don't have to be because there is strength when we call on Jesus Christ. Trials might make you feel weak, but victory comes in when we call on Jesus Christ. How about number, what are we at? Number six. It says, never again should we confess being overpowered by Satan. I love this one. Look in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. It says, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Folks, listen. We should never let, let the enemy come to us and, and think that he has power over us. Listen, if you 
Roll up your sleeves and challenge the devil on your own. He's going to turn you every which way but loose. We don't have the power. We don't have the might. We don't have the authority by ourselves to wrestle against the enemy, to wrestle against Satan. But we have all power through Jesus Christ. He'll give us the strength. He'll give us what we need. He'll give us the love and the sound mind and the power. And he'll give us, you know, strength, all these other verses that we just read. You know, he'll help us if we call out on him. We can't overcome the enemy on our own. But greater is he, which is God, who lives in me than he that is in this world. Any principalities, any demons, Satan himself, any enemy, any person that comes against you, greater is God that's in us than anybody that's in this world. Tap into his strength. Tap into his mercy and his grace. And the last one, never again should we confess defeat. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says, For God always causes us to to triumph in Christ. Folks, today, why don't we live a victorious Christian life? Because he's given us grace. He told us that, you know, we shouldn't go around saying, I can't, that I lack, that I fear, that I lack faith, that I'm weak, that I'm overpowered by Satan, that I'm defeated. These, these are things that, as God's people, we should not utter because he's given us verses to tell us that through Jesus Christ, we can. Through Jesus Christ, we have what we need. Through Jesus Christ, we don't have to be afraid. Folks, we can be brave. We can stand the task. Through Jesus Christ, we can have faith. Through Jesus Christ, we don't have to be weak, but we can be strengthened. Through Jesus Christ, we can overpower the enemy. And through Jesus Christ, we can live a victorious life, not a defeated life. I'm going to share this little poem with you by another poem by Deborah Ann Belka. I love her poems. Um, this here says, be an overcomer. It says, this world is full of tribulation, suffering, stress, and pain. But you can be an overcomer when in your life Jesus reigns. For Jesus has already won. His victories are yours to claim. Just put your faith in him and call upon his name. He has beaten down the devil. I love that. He has beaten down the devil, cast out every evil spirit. So claim your victory in him when Satan comes to visit. There is not an enemy which Jesus has not faced. You too can rise above yours for you for you're covered in his grace. Last verse says, when death comes knocking on your earthly door, Remember that your victory is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. <laughs> and then she gave a verse in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God is overcome, is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Folks, in a nutshell, one word, faith. Let us have faith in Jesus Christ. And we will become more than conquerors. Folks, don't let these things that Satan throws against you, don't let fear and all these negative things come against you. Should not even be in our vocabulary as God's kids. We should say, you know what? My daddy can take care of it all. So today, I encourage you, whatever you're facing, go to the Lord and say, God, I need your help. I need your strength. I'm weak. Now make me strong through my weakness. Folks, he'll give you victory through anything that you face if you keep your faith in Jesus Christ. Listen, that's all I got for you today, Lord willing. We'll wrap up the week um, with tomorrow's devotion. So thanks for watching. Share this video if you don't mind. Guys, have a great day. God bless.